This is not a great example, but it illustrates the same concept that you have a swing point, which is major. Why is this major? Well, because market went to a new low. So we had a low here, we had a pullback and we went to a new low. That creates this point as a major swing point. So market shouldn't go above that point, shouldn't go above here. If it does go above here, then the environment has likely changed into a trading range environment. It can still become an expanding triangle and for the market to crash down here. That's always possible. But more likely, if price goes above a major swing point, and this one was the next one. So we have a new low and a high and a new low again. So this, this is the first, like the last one. But when the market is trending because of the uh, lower high, lower low dynamic, you get a lot of these points. If it goes above one or two of them, or especially if it goes above one of the ones that is more important, how, how do you know which one is more important? There's a breakout after it. There's a breakout. The energy that comes from that point is bigger. Like, for example, we have four of them here. This one is more important. Then there is this one. Then there is these ones. Because look at the burst of bare energy after this point. Look at the burst of bare energy after these points. So a couple of bars, this is a bull bar inside bar, right? So this is not a significant bearish behavior, but this one is. That automatically labels this point as a more important, more significant lower high than these ones. Think about uh, programming, like you are trying to teach the computer to analyze the chart like a trader. So you would classify these with different, you know, weights or different uh, significance numbers inside of a piece of code. That's how you should see it really yourself too. Like you, when you look at this and say, okay, this looks like an <clears throat> important point. This one definitely is when you see this. These ones are not. But because the rhythm was constant from the open up to down to here, that lower, low, lower, high lower, low, lower, high. That rhythm is constant until you get this. This is the first break, major break of any bear swing point. The energy is good. Now you know there are probably buyers below. Problem is we don't know where, how much lower the buyers are going to come in at, but the expectation is that even if the market goes below the low of the day here, it shouldn't fall much below. So if you are in the fading business, this is what you want to see first before you start fading. Here is another one. This is not a good one because it's an outside bar, but it fell below a bull swing point. So market goes below these points, goes to a higher price, and then the good sell starts from that higher price. Therefore, for a counter trend trader, they want to see this first. Breach of the rhythm, test higher, and then a short. Here is another one, right? So you have a bear, you have a bar that goes below the low of this bar. This was, this is not a swing point on this chart, but this is a swing point on a lower time frame chart, like one minute, two minute, because it formed a swing, went lower, so breached that pullback. There was a pullback here. This pullback was triggered here, pretty much like this one, like this one. There was a pullback, and this is on a lower time frame on the one minute chart. And then we went higher, and usually then the sell above that high is a good one if you want to fade the market. Here is a big version of it. The problem with this one is again open and everything that happened overnight that we have no idea of. But to generalize and look at it from this angle, you need this. It's the same concept that we talked about, how much damage the pullback inflicted to the trend side. So this is the trend. This is the damage. Then you know there are buyers below. But you need, you need to see the market penetrate one of those major swing points to fade, to start buying here. 
Here's another example. This is not a very good one, but you have a swing point, bull bar, bull bar. These are all implied. These are happening on the lower time frame. So this really doesn't qualify on the five minute chart, but it qualifies on a lower time frame chart. Bear trend going down. You have a leg that goes above a swing point. This one is also implied because this is an inside bar. I'm just showing you different versions of it, but the idea is the same thing. There was a low here, sorry, here, and we pulled back. Then we went to a new low. Then we went to a high that is above that prior point that was formed by this bull bar. And then the market reverses. There are buyers usually below this low at that point here, and they will scale in lower too. If they are close, then the area is between this point and this point. So the zone, the buy zone will be defined by these two lows there. Here and lower, expecting the market. So the immediate question is, where is my stop, right? Your stop is, in this case, this is the minimum, but I would say here. You have to use a wide stop if you are doing this kind of more advanced trading, but you have to have a stop and you have to know where that stop is. If you are buying in here based on this concept, the idea is the bears should not get a measured move, right? So price shouldn't go here, which means if I put my stop here, it's going to be safe. But then that means you should be able to tolerate all of these deeper moves before the market reverses. Now, if you look at this entire thing, right? So we have a bear spike. We have a period of a trading range price action. Just summarize everything in your mind. And what is the market doing? Well, lower high, lower low, lower high, but it is higher than this one. So we know there are buyers below this point and they're rare. And we have a couple of strong moves and then a new lower low. So this entire thing becomes one, like one of these implied pullbacks that I said, when you see them and then the market goes below them, there are usually buyers there. So bear spike, this, think about it as this, bear spike, then this. This bar 53 is like all of this on intermediate and higher time frames. And then you get a move below this bar, you get a move below this thing. And then there are usually buyers there. Now, those buyers might not get a move that is proportionate to the entire number of bars that you see here, because this is quite a lot of bars, right? So if we compress and take a look at the entire thing, Okay, look at the entire thing. So bear, spike, and channel. The channel starts to go sideways, which is equal to what happened here. And it is happening late. So time is a factor, right? You don't want this early on. You want it when the trend is already old, based on, you know, what I said that later in the cycle, there is more tendencies to take profits. So if you want to fade the market, you have to synchronize yourself with that kind of timing that it is better if it is later in the move. Early on, you usually have momentum. So lots of momentum early on. Okay. Lots of momentum. Pullbacks are small. Pullbacks are getting bigger. And then you have this kind of price structure that there is something happening that is showing you that it is probably forming an inside bar or something. It's forming swing points and now we're going above them. But if you go below them and there has been, you know, good opposite strength, good opposite strength, there are usually buyers below those lows. So these later penetrations of these lows usually get counter-trend tradable pullbacks. <laughs>